Okay, here we go. Back to the Poisson distribution that we were talking about last time. So I want you to, to know both how to use it and when to use it. Well, so it's when we have a Poisson process, which means that uh, hits occur more or less randomly, independent of the past, at uh, Okay, we'll try that. How's that for the back row? At a known long-term rate, say lambda, lowercase lambda, per unit time. Now, there's also a second application, which we'll come to soon. And how? Well, where We want to count the number of hits in time t. Simplest case is perhaps where t equals 1, but uh, in hits in time t, the probability getting k hits in time t, e to the minus lambda, lambda to the k over k factorial where capital lambda is little lambda times t. Well, we said these things last time. But we left a number of questions. Like, where does this formula come from? And question two on our list is what's the mean? the expected value of x. If x has this distribution. Well, let's work this out twice. The short answer, if these hits are occurring randomly, but over a long period of time, the average rate is lambda hits per unit time. So how many hits would we predict for a length of time t units long? We'd guess lambda times t. That, that time interval. In other words, we'd expect the mean to be capital M. But let's do it again. harder working answer. Let's calculate the mean as a weighted sum. We'll take all the things that x could be and weight each one by the right probability and we'll add them up. So x could, for the Number of hits could be as small as zero, and we could weight that with its probability, but then we're going to multiply it by zero, so we don't care much. Or it could be one, or two, or three. Well, ad infinitum, because we could get any number of hits in this time interval, length t, and the probability
for each k, we know from this formula. Probability of zero hit, one hit, lambda to the one over one factorial. One factorial is just one. But the probability of two hits. So we'll fill that in. The probability of three hits. We'd like to know what this infinite sum adds up to. Well, each term has that fa common factor of e to the minus lambda. Let's factor that out. And see what we're left with. Well, some things simplify. For example, this 3 cancels with the 3 hidden in the 3 factorial, and so instead of 3 times 2 times 1, we're left with just 2 times 1. Instead of times 1, we just have 1 period. Moreover, this first term is just zero, we don't have to pay a lot of attention to it. Each term has a factor of lambda. So let's factor that out also. Squeeze it in here. And see what's left. Well, we'll ignore this zero. You know, we factored out the e to the minus lambda, we factored out the lambda. There's just a one left there. The second term, we factored out the e to the minus lambda. We factor out one of these two lambdas, and we're left with the other one. On to this term, we factored out the e to the minus lambda. We factored out one of these three lambdas, so there are only two of them left. Well, we could do a few more terms, but this is probably enough that we see the pattern. We look at that term in brackets, and we say, aha, we, we know what that is. By background fact number one, that's e lambda. Okay. This part in brackets is e to the lambda by background fact number one. So we're left with lambda times e to the minus lambda times e to the lambda. Okay, the e to the minus lambda and the e to the lambda cancel each other, right? Because e to the minus lambda is well over e to the lambda. Yeah, either from the short answer or from the hard-working answer, we get the same conclusion. If x has the Poisson distribution, we now know it's mean. So it's mean is simply capital lambda little lambda times t. Ah, so that answers one of our four questions from last time. Let's do a similar calculation. Again, assuming x has the Poisson distribution, parameter lambda. Let's look for the expect value of x times x minus 1. I mean, that's a new random variable. It's 
related to x, but it's not the same as x. In fact, it's x squared minus x. Well, I want to give two answers to this. And answer number one will look a lot like this calculation. We'll look at all the values this random variable, x times x minus 1, could have, each one weighted with the right probabilities. And we'll add them up. And now we'll do it. Answer 1. Well, what could this be? Well, x can be 0 or 1. Yeah. 0 hits, 1 hit, 2 hits. Well, if we get 0, if x is 0, we have 0 hits, then of course it's 0. Weighted with the right probability, which we might as well ignore as it's zero. Or maybe there's one. Well, again, if x is one, this is still zero. Maybe there are two hits. OK, then we have two times one, right? x times x minus one. And we'll have to weight that with the correct probability, the probability that x really is 2, which is e to the minus lambda, lambda squared over 2 factorial. So we fill in the probabilities that we know. Well, two more terms here. Maybe x is 3. In which case, x times x minus 1 is 3 times 2, 6. OK, and let's put in the right probability for that. One more. 4 times 3, and the probability is e to the minus lambda, lambda to the fourth over 4 factorial. And so forth ad infinitum. And we want to add these things up. Well, we can factor out some things, as we did over here. So we do that. And we'll also, there's some simplifications. Here we have 4 times 3. And the 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The 4 and the 3 cancel. This is now down to just 2 times 1. This 3 times 2 cancels with the 3 times 2 here. It's down to 1 factorial. The uh, 2 times 1 cancels with the 2 times 1 there. It's just one left. So let me move the boards around and see what we got. We're going to factor out that e to the minus lambda. And we can factor out a lambda squared from each term. Because each term has at least a lambda squared in it. And we're left with 0 plus 0, which I'll ignore. That first term is now simply 1. We factored out everything it's got. <coughs> that second term, well, we factored out the e to the minus lambda. We factored out two of those three lambdas, and we're left with one of them. The other term, we factored out the e to the minus lambda. We factored out two of those four lambdas. So we're left with lambda squared.
And we didn't do any more tests, but we can see the pattern. We apply background factor one again. There's e to the lambda, which cancels with our one over e to the lambda here. The expected value is lambda squared. But that's half the story. Let's try to do it a different way. We're looking at, for the expected value of x squared minus x. I mean, all we did was multiply out the x and the x minus 1. And by known properties of the expected value, this is the x squared minus e of x. The expected value of the difference of any two random variables is just the difference in the expected values way back in weeks ago. And we know e of x, because it's Poisson distribution. From the top of the board there. Now we're stuck. because we're not sure what e of x squared is. But not so bad. If we compare answer 1 and answer 2, we will find out what e of x squared is. OK, so we're going to stop here. But compare answer 1 Answer one was lamb, let's start with answer two. Answer two was e of x squared minus lambda. And answer one was lambda squared, but their answers to the same question, so those are the same. Ah, now you probably see through why I did this, because it tells us what the variance of x is. By comparing answer 1 to answer 2, we get that equation over there. Solving it for e of x squared, e x squared is lambda squared plus lambda. Actually, I don't care at all what the expected value of x times x minus 1 is. This is all just a plot to find out the variance. It's e of x squared minus the mean squared, and we now know both of these quantities. e of x squared is lambda squared plus lambda. And the mean is lambda. So mean squared is lambda squared. That is for the Poisson distribution. The variance is lambda, and the standard deviation is the square root lambda. which answers questions 3 and 4. Now, the square root is OK. Uh, lam capital lambda is sure to be positive. Uh, little lambda is the rate of hits. It wouldn't make any sense for that to be a negative number. 
the time interval, we have to have a time interval of positive length. Well, now that we know the mean and the variance and the standard deviation, we can work this problem that is like ones we've seen before. Let's assume we have the standard, we have the Poisson distribution. with the parameter 3, capital lambda is 3. And then we ask, what's the probability that it's going to be within one standard deviation of its mean? In symbols, yeah, the probability is the distance between whatever number of hits we get minus its mean is no more than the standard deviation or we have the option of writing it out we're looking for the probability that the measurement for x we get is no more than the mean plus sigma, but it's at least the mean minus sigma. Well, we can put in numbers here. We know the mean, we know the standard deviation. Lambda is 3. So, this, so the mean, the expected value, is 3 because we did that up there. And the standard deviation is the square root of three. Um, and it's enough to know it's between one and two. It's, it's 1.73 to a couple of decimal places. So what the problem is asking for is the probability that x is well, at most, 3 plus 1 standard deviation, 4.73. But it's at least the mean minus 1 standard deviation, which is 1.27. That is, plugging in the numbers, the problem is asking, what's the probability that the number of hits is in this interval. Well, but the number of hits has to be a whole number. So we're looking at the whole numbers between 1.27 and 4.73, and there's three of them. Uh, two, and three, and four. One is not in this interval, and five is not there. We know the probability of being two, and we know the probability of being three or four. And these are disjoint events. The probability of being two is e to the minus, well, lambda is three. So I have e to the minus three times uh, 3 squared over 2 factorial. The probability of, of 3 hit well we fill that the probability of 4 hits. Uh, 
and let's see what we get. This e to the minus 3 in each of terms, here we have 9 over 2. The 3 squared over 2 factorial. We have 27 over 6, that reduces. Eighty one over twenty four, that reduces also. And well, we can add up these fractions, or we can just ask our calculator what it is. If you add up the fractions, we get ninety nine over eight. But if we ask our calculator, It's between 61 and 62 percent. The three decimal places is 0.616. The probability of being within one standard deviation of the mean in this case. Another problem. I'm aware that of our little four questions, we have not addressed question one. That is, where does the form come from? Well, here's another problem, which will work some number of different ways. Let's assume that we, some city is interested in examining its debt rate. And they look over the statistics, and near as they can see, deaths occur in the city just at random. There's no great turn to them. But by adding up the numbers over a number of years they have records for, They find while the deaths occur randomly, the average rate over the long run is 0 0.1 deaths per day. Well, so it looks like a Poisson process. These hits occur at random, independent of the past, but we know the long the average rate. You ask, what's the probability of deaths? I mean, exactly two, not at least two. I mean, two and only two next month, in the month of November. Well, first let's do the solution that gives the right answer. We look at this as a Poisson process. The rate of hits 0 0.1 per day. The month of November has 30 days. So, so capital lambda, lambda t, is 3. So in the month of November, the city should expect the expected number of deaths is three. Yeah, but two deaths is not out of the question, and we want the probability of two. Uh, e to the minus lambda, lambda squared over two factorial.
by coincidence, the same numbers that came up in a different problem. And numerically, to four decimal places, we get the probability of point 0.2240, around 22%. Probability of three might be a little higher, but um, yeah, this is the probability of two. Now let's do the problem again, but perhaps not quite as well, because instead of viewing it as a Poisson process, we can get a pretty good approximation by thinking of it as Bernoulli trials, one per day. Well, that won't give me as an exact an answer, but approximation number 30. We'll think of each day as a Bernoulli trial. Either a death occurs or it doesn't. So success means a death occurs. And we're given that, uh, yeah, there's a, about one death every 10 days. So roughly the probability of f for t equals 1, yeah, lambda times 1 would be 0.1. And failure is probability 0.9. And so the probability of two successes, we have 30 days. We have these 30 trials. And the probability of getting two deaths actually two days with deaths. We're ignoring the death rate is small enough that we, this approximation ignores the, problem, the chance that it might be a day with two deaths. So we'd get a better approximation if we increase from 30 to 1,000. Okay, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, okay, 30, choose 2. 0.1 squared, 0.9 28. If we look at the problem as a binomial problem, we get this. And we get a probability that's close. It's close to 0 0.2240, but it's not quite there because 30 isn't really big enough. There might be a day with two deaths, and that's going to mess things up. So let's try to do better. Approximation n. We split the month up into n equal pieces, where n is going to be some quite large number. Now, in any one time interval, n trials, or n time periods, each, uh, each 30 over n days long. So if n is 1,000, this is going to be a fraction of a day. And the probability of getting a success, that is a death, 
in one of these trials, well, it's lambda times the uh, times t. Uh, point one deaths per day times the number of days in that trial. Three over n. So before n was 30, and so p was just 0.1. But if it's 1,000, this is going to be some small number. And the probability of two deaths, or really two trials that ha which deaths occur, n choose 2. 3 over n squared times, well, 1 minus 3 over n to the n minus 2. I did this for n equals 30, but for n equals 1,000 or 10,000, probably get a much more accurate answer. But we're not going to do that. We want the exact answer. We want approximation infinity. That is, we want something that's not an approximation at all. We want the limit as n goes to infinity. Because that should, should give us the exact answer. We're looking at uh, certain shorter time intervals. Let's calculate this limit. So let me write this out again. Probability of s equals 2. n choose 2. Well, we, we know that's n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial, which is just 2. OK, then we have a, well, a 9 over n squared. So let's write it as 9 over n squared. times this last term. And we'd like to know what happens as n goes to infinity. Well, let me rearrange things a little bit here. This 9 over 2, yeah, we have a 9 over 2. Ignore that. Combine this much. The ends cancel. I mean, that end cancels with one of those two ends. And we're left with n over n, that's 1 minus 1 over n. So the part circled in red simplifies to this much. Now we have 1 minus 3 over n to the power n minus 2. That power n minus 2 I want to, to separate into the n of them and the minus 2 of them. So this to the n minus 2. Now what's going to happen as n goes to infinity? The 9 over 2 just sits there. That's the easy part. One over n is going to go off to zero. 
So 1 minus 1 over n is going to approach 1. For that matter, 3 over n goes to 0. So 1 minus 3 over n will approach 1. And you square it, and it's still 1. This, ah, you remember background fact number two. Now we need it. This approaches e to the minus three. Background fact number two. So the whole thing, putting the pieces together, approaches as a limit nine has e to the minus three. Exactly what the Poisson distribution gives you. And to generalize this a little, instead of the numbers Instead of using 3 and So instead of 3, what if we use uh, little lambda times t? That is replace 30 in this problem by, uh, well, just some time interval t. And the rate by, oh, some rate little lambda. And we find the probability of two hits. in the limit. If we do it as a binomial distribution problem as n goes to infinity, well, we do the same calculation, except the numbers are slightly different. It's e to the minus lambda lambda squared over 2 factorial. This is where the Poisson distribution comes from. We could generalize it still further if we change 2 hits to k hits. The algebra gets uglier. But if we apply the binomial distribution and then take the limit as it goes off to infinity, we get the Poisson distribution. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is for three things. One. It answers question number one. This is where that formula for the Poisson distribution comes from. I mean, we just wrote it down. The probability of x of k hits e to the minus lambda, lambda to the k over k factorial. This is where it comes from. It's the limit of what the binomial distribution gives us as n goes to infinity. As n goes to infinity, but where n times p 
held fixed at capital lambda, little lambda times t. So we can think of a Poisson process as a, li as a limit of Bernoulli's trials, which we were thinking about before. Yeah, if there are Bernoulli trials, but done not one at a time, but done sort of continually. And now and then you get a success. The Poisson process is the limit of doing Bernoulli trials where the number of trials goes off to infinity. Yeah, but with n times p held fixed. And thirdly, it tells us here is a second use for the Poisson distribution. And the first use is counting the number of hits in a Poisson process. Here's another time to use it. It gives us something that's very close to the binomial distribution. And sometimes it gives us an easy approximation to the binomial distribution that's going to be extremely accurate for large n. After all, it's going to be exact as n goes to infinity. That is, a second application for the Poisson distribution. Is can use it to approximate the binomial distribution. When n is large, for the binomial distribution, well, we're you know, raising things to, well, for two hits, you have to raise the failure probability to the power n minus 2. Well, it's kind of a nuisance if n is a thousand. But if n is large, yeah, we're getting close to the limit, as it, and the limit is the Poisson distribution. Now, as a rule of thumb, this should only be used when n times p is less than 5, because otherwise it becomes somewhat inaccurate. But if n times p is more than 5, we're going to have another way to approximate the binomial distribution later. So here's where we are. One of those charts again, but in a different way. Sometimes we're counting the number of hits. Sometimes we're looking at Bernoulli trials. And sometimes we're looking at a Poisson process. Well, in the top row, we know what to do. For the number of hits in Bernoulli trials, we apply the binomial distribution. We know the formula for that. We can calculate probability of seven hits. Number of hits in a Poisson process, we know what to do. We apply the Poisson distribution. But there's another random variable we can look at, namely the waiting time to the first hit. And for Bernoulli tells, we know how to do that. This is when we apply the geometric distribution.
this is where we are. Notice the obvious gap. The third square is blank. What we need is a distribution to use for the waiting time to the first hit in the Poisson process. Wait time. Well, we have enough, we know enough to work out the probability here. It's going to be called the exponential distribution. But no more time for today. Today's Halloween. I wouldn't want you to think that I had forgotten my mask or anything like that. We will carry on with the exponential distribution next week.